Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a six-year-old boy is among the at least three people killed after a shooting in California. And a woman is recovering after a fall at Red River Gorge, where a team of medical professionals are working to reduce outdoor injury damages. Plus, family members of one Pike County girl said their final goodbyes after a long medical battle. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. It is 4.59 on Monday, July the 29th. I'm Will Puckett. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News This Morning. Well, everybody can take a deep sigh of relief. We have the return of our man, Brandon Robinson, this morning. Brandon, last week was gorgeous. I joked mm -hmm. with Kelly yesterday is that I don't know if I wanted you back because it seems like when we we're apart, the weather was perfect. I know. And listen, I, I blame Paige. Paige was on vacation exactly. and everything was perfect. So now she's back and the rain's back, but not today. Let's take a look, see what's going on across the region this morning. We start up on top of Pine Whitesburg Mountain there, US 119, all quiet there as we head into the first part of your day. Some patchy, dense fog, especially in the Cumberland Valley. So be careful down that one uh, way, one mile in Harlan, two and a half miles at Middlesboro Life. Pinpoint Doppler radar, nice and quiet for you this this morning. Temperatures in the low to mid to upper 60s, close to 70 there in Prestonsburg this morning. So your AM special for the iced coffee forecast, a mild morning, but of course it's Monday, so extra large. And your out the door forecast features temperatures that are sore into the mid to upper 80s this afternoon. We could see a PM pop up in the heat of the day just ahead of that cold front, which will be here tomorrow. I have the rest of that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. We'll all righty, Brandon, thank you. Well, a six-year-old boy is among the at least three people dead after a shooting at a garlic festival in California last night. Fifteen others are wounded. The gunman is also dead, and police are still searching for a second person who may have been involved. CBS's Katherine Johnson is in Washington, D.C. with more. What's going on? What's going on? People ran for their lives as gunfire rang out at a food festival Sunday evening. At least one person opened fire at a garlic festival in Gilroy, California, about 80 miles south of San Francisco. I need access to the uh, compound, specifically medical. We have several victims down. Gilroy Police Chief Scott Smithy says officers shot and killed the suspect less than a minute after he started shooting. It appears as if though they had come into the festival via the creek, which borders a parking area, uh, and they use some sort of a tool to cut through the fence to be able to gain access through the secure fence line. Witnesses say the shooting happened near a music stage and some weren't sure what they heard at first. It's like pow, 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 pow. So right away I just thought, wow, somebody's going to get in trouble for doing fireworks at our festival. This man said the bullets just missed him and his wife. Two shots rang out first. And at the same time, the music started. But after a few seconds, there were so many shots. Ta -ta 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 -ta, and I saw people falling down, kids falling down. Police continued to search the woods around the festival hours after the shooting. We believe, based on witness statements, that there was a second individual involved in some way. We just don't know in what way. The three-day festival is in its 41st year and typically draws thousands of people. Gilroy calls itself the garlic capital of the world. Katherine Johnson, CBS News. Police are still looking for that second individual. Investigators are still trying to determine the motive. Another news conference is expected later this morning. And new this morning, a crash involving a semi has shut down the northbound lanes of Interstate 75 in Laurel County. Police say the crash happened around mile marker 33 near North Corbin. They have the interstate blocked at exit 29. We do not have information on injuries or deaths at this time. This is a developing story and we will continue to update on air and on our website as we continue to learn more. Now also new this morning, a church is badly damaged after a fire in Wayne County, West Virginia. Wayne County dispatch officials say Florence Memorial United Methodist Church in the Dixon area of Wayne County caught fire around 1130 Sunday night. Our sister station WSAZ was on the scene and said the steeple of the church collapsed. Multiple fire departments responded to help put out the fire. Family members of one Pike County girl said their final goodbyes yesterday. 16-year-old Shaylee Cobb died Wednesday after health complications. While her leukemia was in remission, her body could not fight, could not fight off other bacteria, causing her to become extremely sick. Her father, C.J. Cobb, says her declining health was devastating. 
I would rather been on a deployment to Afghanistan than to deal with the loss of a child. Bone marrow donors were key in her recovery while advocating for donations. CJ says he hopes his daughter's heartbreaking story helps other families in similar situations. Her funeral was yesterday at Community Funeral Home. CJ says he would like to thank everyone who helped his family through these hard times. Police in Western Kentucky say a woman sitting in her living room was killed over the weekend when a pickup truck struck her home. State police in Madisonville say in a news release that 72 year old Mary Bass of Marion was pronounced dead after the incident Saturday night. The truck failed to stop at an intersection and went into the home. Meanwhile, Clay County deputies are asking for people's help finding a man they say broke into a home and stole several items. Deputies say they responded to a burglary call today on South Highway 421. Surveillance video shows a man carrying items from the home and driving off in what appears to be a black Chevrolet HHR. Anyone with information is asked to call the Clay County Sheriff's Office at 606-598-3471. A New York man is charged with manslaughter after his twin one-year-old girls were found dead after being left in a hot car for eight hours. Juan Rodriguez was arraigned Saturday. The twins were found unresponsive in the back seat of his Honda, Honda sedan Friday. They were pronounced dead at the scene. Police say Rodriguez told them that he assumed he dropped them off at daycare before going to work and that he blanked out. A woman is recovering after a fall at Red River Gorge. Search and rescue teams were called into action around 11 o'clock Sunday morning. For missions like this, people might need immediate medical attention. For years, it is something they couldn't get until they were removed. But now, a new group of medical professionals is diving right in with those rescue crews. The group is called Red River Gorge Special Treatment Access and Rescue, or Red Star for short. And it is full of nurses, doctors, EMTs, and paramedics who are also trained in search and rescue skills. I think every county in Kentucky should have a capability like this. It's hard to find a county in Kentucky that doesn't have wilderness areas where people hunt or fish or paddle or hike. Red Star is also reminding people to be careful while they are out hiking. People are urged to bring plenty of water and know their limits when the terrain gets tough. Well, thank you for joining us on Mountain News this morning. We have a bit of a lighter news coming up. We'll have more on the history of yet another quirky but delicious national holiday. Some patchy dense fog could greet you early this morning, but for the most part, today should be a fairly nice day. Changes are coming, though. I'll tell you about it in about three minutes.